Hey, no question. You, don't remind me. Don't remind me. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, I was a big Washington fan That's growing up. up. Where they at? Where they coming from? <laughs> Doctor Doolittle, what, you, what do y'all have going yeah. on at this house? Blacksburg, special yeah. place. It was special. As, a, as an opponent going in there, yeah. I say I never had to do that. <laughs> The Players Club is presented by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington Commanders. Welcome into the Players Club. I'm London Fletcher, joined with Santana Moss and the tight end, TE1, I should call you, Logan Thomas. We appreciate you joining us in Players Club. Man, I appreciate being here. Coming on, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, we like to talk about football. We talk about stuff off the field, just things that you're into. We try to get to know you kind of beyond the behind the mask so we have a lot of fun in the players club man yeah. it's, it's not your typical Relax. time looking back at your childhood what was it like growing up for you in virginia uh i loved my childhood growing up um just living living in lynchburg where i did i uh, kind of got to see a lot of different things a lot of different people uh sports was king though from where i'm from in lynchburg and uh it was just an honor just to be able to play everything i played every sport known to man. So um, I had my hand in, in all of it. When you hear, you, you mentioned playing a lot of different sports. You played football, basketball, ran track, I'm sure. Yep. Well, did, did you play baseball as well? I played baseball up until ninth grade. Mm. Yep. When you see and hear like the kids specializing in sports at, shoot, in middle school, you got some kids that are only playing basketball, only playing football, only playing baseball. What, what goes through your mind when you hear like these kids are specializing in a sport that that young. Uh, I don't like it. Um, I, yeah, it's great to have a, a specialty, but I think you can develop that later on in life. Uh, I think the crossover symmetry is what you need. For me, soccer was really big for me when I was growing up. I was young when I played, but it was big for me just developing footwork. Baseball, hand-eye coordination. Uh, football encompasses all of that. Basketball is where you stay athletic and move around, and uh, I think you start to develop different traits that help you in all your different all sports, sports when you do it. When did you find out that one was going to kind of trump the other? Cause I mean, you played more than just, you know, me growing up. I, I was track and football. So I think track went hand-to-hand -hand with football, so it basically helped my football game. But you played odd sports. So when did you know to say, hey, I'm kind of leaning to this one other, you know, outside the other – few sports that I'm playing. Yeah, so first off, I thought I was going to play basketball. I was always taller than everybody, yeah. <laughs> moved pretty fluidly, had a nice jumper. Uh, I thought basketball was my thing, but I always enjoyed football. It was just, mm -hmm. you know, it was a game I played in, in the fall, you know, that yeah. was the game. Uh, it didn't really hit me until after my sophomore year. I was playing receiver on the varsity, had a good season, uh, and that's when the recruiting letters started coming in. And I was getting them for football, but not for basketball, wow. right? So uh, it was at that point I kind of knew – um, you know, six six is everywhere in, in basketball. Like yeah. that's the norm. That's the norm. You're actually short. Like if, if you're six six, and then football, it's it's the outlier. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have an athletic six six guy, you're gonna have a chance to have a position yeah. wherever you might play. So. No, so I was just wondering because you said receiver that that rung a bell to me. So if so, if you play receiver in high school. Where quarterback came in at? So I was always the backup. Okay. Always the backup quarterback. Always able to throw the ball well. I was comfortable uh, having the football in my hands, but. Uh, it didn't come in until my junior year. I played in eighth grade a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ninth grade, I was the backup. But uh, my coach, Jeff Woody, he was like, we got to get the best player of the ball every snap, mm -hmm. whether he's handing it off, whether he's running it, or whether he's throwing it. And uh, I liked it. I liked yeah. having the ball. Not catching the ball eight times a yeah. game, but having the ball 60, 70 snaps a game, you feel like you can impact in that way. Mm -hmm. So you, were only, you only played two years of high school football at the, as a quarterback. Correct. And you were able to parlay that into being a – uh, all American, yeah. a, a USA <laughs> Army All American in two two years. Yep, yep. So actually, it was at tight end, and I don't know how I became All, all really? American. Yeah, just wow. I went to all the camps, the Nike camps, um, all the summits and stuff like that, and ran receiver routes. They moved me inside to tight end a couple times, but with the the frame, the speed, the hands, they always labeled me as the tight end, which isn't the worst thing in the world, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I always knew I could throw the ball too, and yep. I was always reliant junior, senior year, high school, and then obviously at Virginia Tech to throw the football. So it was uh, pretty natural. How, how many how many colleges recruited you as a as a quarterback? And were there some recruiting you only as a tight end or some of them was like, hey, we recruit you as an athlete? So I had a bunch of athletes. Um, I think I had three or four teams uh, for quarterback, Duke, Boston College, 
um, some teams out west, which were not, weren't on my radar for real. Right. Yeah. Um, but a lot of schools, were, the main thing was tight end or what they called back then that H back position. H back, yeah. Uh, the, to move around and stuff like that. That was the bigger name schools. So the Florida States, Virginia Tech, uh, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, those teams uh, called for tight end. And then I had a couple safeties and a couple DNs. Wow. Yeah. I remember watching you, man. You know, I'm a hurricane. And I was just talking uh, before you got on about Blacksburg. Mm -hmm. and how it felt for me to be an opponent walking into that stadium, especially on a Thursday night no question. with the fans going crazy. You played some pretty good ball as a quarterback there. And I remember watching you, and I remember I think it was your senior year, you you put a number on us, and I'm like, man, that dude right there going to be special. And then you fast forward to see what you're doing now. What was it like as a quarterback when you finally got your chance to be the guy and putting up the numbers that you put up? Did you immediately feel that, hey, I had a chance, I got a chance to play this on the next level? Absolutely. Uh, always from a young kid, I knew I was going to be able to have the opportunity to play in the NFL. Like I said, the size. Yeah. Uh, but I had a good mentor in Tyrod who mm -hmm. I kind of got to sit back and learn from him for two years, understand what it took to be a quarterback. Um, he got dinged up one game. I came in, made a couple throws, and he came back in. And that's when it set in. I was like, all right, yeah, I can do yeah, this. You can do it. And then uh, obviously I got the reins after he, he was gone. And um, so my college career took off pretty quickly there. And uh, we ended up going to the Sugar Bowl that year. Mm -hmm. It was a blast, but Blacksburg, special yeah, place. It was special. As, a, as an opponent going in there, yeah. I, honestly, I never had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's loud Trust from me. from jump to the end, man. It's uh, always it's a cool tough place. place to play. Yeah. But you you mentioned being loud from from the beginning into the sand, man. I don't think there's a better atmosphere in college football than when they play that into the sand, man. What what was it like being in that environment? And they play that in in the sand, man. Yeah, man. When we were rolling and it was a night game, there is yeah. – so in that tunnel, so we come out the tunnel, right? In the tunnel, you can't hear any of the music. Mm -hmm. The only thing you can hear is the vibrations. So this is like the tunnels just – Don't remind doo -doo 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 -doo. me. Don't remind <laughs> me. You can't hear Don't anything except the vibrations. Me. And then when you run out, then you get to see all the smoke. See all, the, see smoke. all the fans. And it's just it's, – it's numbing loud. It's, it's crazy loud. The cool thing about that that I learned – uh, becoming a uh, junior, I was I was a captain, mm -hmm. senior. So the captains go out, and you don't come out in the tunnel. So getting to watch your team, to watch it come out. run out, yeah, that was that was. Different. It's almost too man, and I want to I want to stay on it for a minute because as an opponent, and you know we feel like we just bad, you right, know what right, I mean? We right. got our smoke, we do our thing, but you in that stadium, and you don't see them, but you hear this noise, so you basically like. Where they at? Where they coming from? <laughs> and you just like you you basically like on the sideline, like, come on now, let's play. And you know how you know how we are as players. We got our, we all psyched that we hype. But this whole this is like a it's like a it's like a show in itself. Finna watch this team come out, but you hearing the noise, you're hearing the fans, and then they just come out and it's like, well damn. Like it, it almost <laughs> takes the air out you a little bit. Like it, it psych you out a little bit. Like okay, well, we gotta get together. Well, yeah, that's the whole point advantage you no, want. No, no. He went to the U, so no it, it, you know how much swag and confidence yeah. bro, they have. I vividly I remember watching that and being like, oh, I gotta get myself back into right. mode because right now these dudes just took a little bit of my, you know, out yeah. of me a little bit. It's a man. little bit of a show. Yeah, it man, is. That's that's the home foot advantage you want. It means everything. You're a legend was, forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. because of that. So, I was a fan of you guys growing up, so it's nice everything come full circle. No. Time for the Player Profile, presented by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington Commanders. How far is Blacksburg from uh, Lynchburg? It's about an hour and a half, uh, <laughs> right down I-81. Did you uh, did you grow up a, a Virginia Tech fan, or See, it was just more like... I grew up a, a basketball fan, so I was a North Carolina basketball fan. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. as things started going, 
my decision to go to school was I, I wanted to win, so UVA was automatically out in that yeah. point. Uh, you know, we beat up on them all five of my years <laughs> and then nine extra after that. So. Yeah. Right, right. Um, so I didn't grow up a, a Virginia Tech fan, but I grew to love it the more I started watching them and uh, just seeing the names come out of there and just the way that the, the city and, and the people regarded themselves and then going on campus felt like home. I know you, you were a big-time basketball fan and, and basketball player growing up. In terms of did you even like pro football? And if, if so, were you a Washington fan being that you lived in Virginia? Oh, I love pro football, man. Sundays Sundays in my household was dedicated to it. My grandfather always had had Washington on. And uh, so, yeah, I was a big Washington fan oh, growing up. up. Yeah, oh, wow. my, my grandfather grew up before TV. Mm -hmm. They just listened to it on the radio. And so then they got TV and he, he ingrained it to me. So full circle, how is it like now? You know, and I want to I'm going to touch bases with all the other stints you had to stop that. How is it now to just be here and knowing what it was like growing up and knowing how much this team meant to your family? Uh, it means everything. Like, I've scratched and clawed to get back here, to be yeah. honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always said it's the place I want to come back and play. Mm -hmm. uh, and things definitely haven't changed since then, man. It's a, it's a wonderful place to be at. And uh, I feel like I carry a little bit out on my shoulders. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want to see this <laughs> this franchise return to the dominance no it's always uh, been looked at, and you know, early on in the 90s and, and the 80s. So um, I'm excited to see where we go because – we, we got some good people in this building, and we're, and we're going the right, right direction. That's good. So, I mean, you're a hell of a tight end right now on this level. But you got here in this level as a quarterback. Um, what was that journey like? What was the experience like once? And what was the journey like having to switch over to something that you was familiar to? Because I'm, I'm going to tell you, before I did my research on you, I didn't know you had a pass in, you know, catching passes and yeah. being a receiver and, and had a little stint at tight end previously before you got on this level. How was that, you know, that whole thing like? Because I know as a quarterback or any position, you come from college, you played at the highest of all highest levels on one of the best teams in the, at one point, Big East, now ACC. Um, and then you got to switch your positions. Uh, I, I just want to know and tell the fans and the viewers, how was that like for you? Did you take it easy? Did you want to do that switch at this point of time in your life and what it was like? Uh, I would say it was a roller coaster. Uh, that's the best way I can put it. Uh, knew I was going to have an opportunity to be drafted quarterback based off of how I played. Mm -hmm. um, but I always had that little, that little voice in the back of my head said, hey, if this doesn't work out, I have the opportunity to make the switch. It was still natural, still fluid. Um, I did a little bit of it in college. So that was comfortable. Mm -hmm. But I always gave 100% in the quarterback. Um, now I, I feel like I could have put a little bit more out there. But I always had that little bug in the back of my head saying it. Um, early on in my quarterback career when I was in Arizona, um, I feel like I lost a little bit of confidence. Mm. And uh, that's when that, that voice started uh, really rearing its head. When you say you lost a little bit of confidence, was it more about just how you were playing or maybe not the, the culture, the system? I don't – you know, if you – just looking at the college game now and how they've, they're they catering offenses more to the college game, you think your style style of play would be better suited for today's NFL game or was it just like you could have played in any type of uh, offense it was just more you lost confidence because you weren't playing at the level that you felt like you could play at? Um, yeah, I feel confident that I could play in any system. I mean, in college I, I ran the spread and I was in the eye under center. Okay. So I felt confident that I could do both. Uh, for me it was – you know, I felt like I was doing okay, but I wasn't getting any feedback saying that I was doing mm -hmm. okay. And if I did do something right, I could have done something better. Got and it. so, like, you just started losing a little bit here and there. Like, you could make a great throw, and they'd be like, that's the wrong read. You know, that type of thing. <laughs> and it was just nothing was right. Yeah. Um, and then that started snowballing to where, you know, you get in your head, and then everything you try to do is perfect, and you can't play perfect. I, I, that sounds like it was probably some – the front office probably wanted you, and the coaches probably somebody wanted thing, somebody bro. else. So yeah. you were just, you know, bearing the brunt of that yeah. because they had conflict. So and that's crazy. Where man, they wanted you to. Right, yeah. yeah. You and you go into there, and you, like, at the end of the day, you're their player, so coach me up and, and encourage me. I was talking to your tight ends. You know, we, once you left downstairs, uh, Cole Turner and, uh, and John Bates, we got to talking about the quarterback position. And you, you were there with us for a little bit, but I was talking about playing – pro quarterback and I said that's the toughest position in all of sport yeah, when tough. you talk about the responsibility the commitment all the things the sacrifices and it was based on a Tom Brady conversation too just how this guy is still doing that at 23 years in the league yeah. 
now you've been a tight end for you know four or five years. What's the difference from the prep preparation standpoint when you're as a tight end and then when you were a quarterback? Yeah, so you still have your preparation at tight end. Um, for me, what I try to tell my young guys, you don't got to know what all 22 are doing. Mm -hmm. You got to know what you're doing, the guy beside you is doing, and then you got four guys on defense you're really concerned about and you got to know what they're doing. But at quarterback, your preparation is completely different. Completely you got to know all 22. Then you got to know every single play, every person who's running a route. You mm -hmm. got to know what their route is, yeah. the depth they're supposed to be at, the routes they're supposed to run. So it's completely different, like just mindset wise. You get to go home at tight end. I'm able to go home, check out 30, 45 minutes of film, and then I'm I'm good. Quarterback, you're in there for two hours just trying to pick <laughs> up on small tips that can right. help you on Sunday. So I was going to ask you too because I'm glad uh, London brought it up. How are you seeing things as a tight end? Is it easier for you because of your history as a quarterback? Because I, I know most guys who played the position quarterback and has transitioned to a receiver or maybe something similar to H back or a tight end. You know, when I talk to them about how they see coverages, they say they basically see it as a quarterback, but they they dumb it down a little bit because Absolutely. they don't have to know everything, but Absolutely. they they can see what they need to know a little easier. So is that the same thing for you? For sure, and a lot of it comes when. The quarterback comes to the line, he's got to make a check. I know the check's going to happen before he checks it. Before he checks it. Or the check should happen, mm -hmm. right? And so I can already flip my mind to that gear for a separate play. Um, but, yeah, it definitely helps. Uh, like when I go out there, I'm like, all right, it's a two-shell. I, I know what I got here. I know mm -hmm. who's going to match me. Yeah. All right, it's a three-shell. I'm going to get a different person match. And then if something happens, I'm like, okay, nickel's coming. I got to change. Oh, that's how the I got to change. Yeah. And so – um, that's kind of what I was saying, just knowing four positions, yeah. what four guys are doing mm -hmm. instead of all of it. Because I'm not worried about what's going on exactly. on the left side of the field, for real. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know what it's supposed to happen mm -hmm. over there, but I got to know what these guys in front of me are doing. Yeah, I tell guys all the time, I don't mean to cut you off, uh, London. I tell guys all the time, even as a receiver, I would just trim the field down. Like, no question. I'm going to watch the whole shell of what they got mm -hmm. going on both sides, but I don't need to know what they're doing over there. I need to know what's going on over here because this is my window. This is what I got to do. So I look at that safety, I look at that corner, I say, okay, if they show me cloud, it's a cloud until they show me something different. Absolutely. I don't care if it's two, four, six. I don't know. I don't know. I see <laughs> right, a cloud. Right. No so question. I know my, my route would just, mm -hmm. you know, depending on that, the, that coverage or whatever. You mentioned the two hours of extra time that you, you would spend as a quarterback if you were still playing quarterback. Man, looking at your family, you and your <laughs> wife, Brandy, you got five <laughs> kids at home. Yep. Five kids at home. I looked at the, all the different pets you have. You got a do you have dogs, cat, horses, a bearded dragon, yep. and a turtle. What, Dr. Doolittle, what, your, what do y'all have <laughs> yeah. going on at this house? What, what's your household like? Uh, it's it's a bit wild at times, you know. I get I get out of here and I gotta take the kids to practice, and then we come home and then dogs gotta get walked. Cats are easy. The bearded dragon don't do nothing. They just lay there. Eat lettuce. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> lay on your shoulder. Um, when we're back home, the horses. That's that's the fun part where you just get to go to the stable, feed them, walk them, uh, train them a little bit. But uh, once you get in a regiment, you get used to it. Yeah. yeah, you get a little schedule going. You're you're able to move through it, but. Uh, we got, you know, 10 extra hands, so yeah, yeah. yeah they got to have some responsibility too. Yeah, man. Well, Logan, we appreciate you coming on the Most Players good. Club, but, you know, something we've been having all our guys do is sign this football. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, to uh, kind of have all our guests do that, throw that autograph on there, man. Appreciate Definitely you joining appreciate the Players you, Club. Look forward to watching you play this season and uh, obviously watching you play on, on Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, thank you. I appreciate being here, and uh, I was a fan of you guys growing up, so it's nice that everything come full circle. No doubt. No doubt. Still to come on the Players Club. And they coach circled me <laughs> that <laughs> week. That's that number 48, I'm telling hey, you. <laughs> <laughs> that rivalry against the Eagles, that was it's special. Back on the Players Club, I'm London Fletcher, joined by Santana Moss. Tana, we were just talking to Logan Thomas about his 
his time in, at Virginia Tech. And you mentioned your your memory of when they came out to enter the Sandman. You got any great memories about playing against Virginia, Virginia Tech on that football field, maybe doing something that, that just stands out in your memory? Yeah, a lot of stuff stands out when we play those guys, especially up in Blacksburg. Um, I didn't beat them until my senior year, and it was a home game down in Miami. So that was kind of big for us, But uh, and that was a big year all around for us. But um, playing up there, I remember being a young pup. You know, that's probably my most fondest memory about V Tech and Blacksburg. It was it was cold as all outdoors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a true freshman. Um, I didn't imagine myself being in this moment this early in my career. And I remember putting on the thickest arm um, sleeves I can put on. Some t- I had orange tights on. And me, Reggie Wayne, Daryl Jones, all us true true freshman wide receivers, we had to go out there and go toe-to-toe with these guys. And right. I mean, we as a core put on a show. I had like some deep balls. I, caught, I remember it was third and long a couple of times. Uh, remember Pierce and Prelude? Yeah, yeah, Play Pierce, here yeah, yeah, Pierce. Pierce and Prelude tells me the story about me being number 48. And their coach circled me <laughs> that week and say, man, this guy here, if he catch a pass on y'all, y'all don't know, y'all aren't supposed to be playing here. Right. And Pearson Prelude tells me that this is a great story, too. He, he, he gets here with me. He say, Tanner, you bumped me on third and long. And the coach, the team, everybody told me, oh, man, you got bummed by number 48. <laughs> And he said, he told the coach, man, he ain't he ain't what you think he is. Hey. And he said, the next year, I wore number six. And he said, everybody was like, man, you only got this number six that's dynamite. He said, that's that number 48, I'm telling you. Hey, the, <laughs> you know, people, people don't understand, like, us as defensive players, we see, like, certain numbers – you look sweet in. You see yeah. another uh, receiver in number 48. You're like, man. Let's I, check him off, man. Yeah, like, bet, I'm not worried you, about you a receiver not. wearing number 48. <laughs> yeah. But then I see you in number six, like, yeah. oh, the single yeah. digit. Yeah. You, play, you talk about playing at the U, man. Y'all had some great college football team throughout the history. Mm-hmm. Switching gears, man, looking at we got the Eagles coming up on the schedule. I can remember you know, when I first came here in this, in this division playing against the Philadelphia Eagles. Our first game there, this is 07, and mm-hmm. you you going to remember this. We played them on Monday Night Football. Mm. <laughs> it's like I think it was like the third game of the season. So it was early in the season. We're driving into, into the stadium in Philadelphia, and their fans were throwing eggs at our yeah. bus, man. I, I was like, oh, yeah, this is different. That was yeah. the first time I had, been in, I had been in St. Louis. I had been in Buffalo, and we had some rivals. But we never had their fans throw eggs at our bus yeah. and – batteries and say some of the other choice words that they say to us coming into the stadium and obviously coming onto the field. That 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 was my first memory of, of the Philadelphia Eagles and that rivalry mm-hmm. and what it's like. You know, I knew about the Dallas rivalry, but that 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 rivalry against the Eagles, that was it's, special. It's definitely different and it doesn't get a lot of I guess um media time when it comes to us against them. You know you get mostly of those Washington against Dallas more than anything. Mm. And I feel for the simple fact of us not getting as much media time when we face these guys, the Eagles, and I know we're not talking about the Giants, but those two franchises have really had their way with us. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. And so, but when getting back to the Eagles, man, it's always been one of those things. Like when I got here, I didn't know diddly about none of those those rivals. You know, like I said, even the whole – thing that happened to me that transpired in in uh in Dallas my second game here the whole Monday night miracle thing mm-hmm. to be a part of that to know what that meant to the city I was uh, you know I was naive enough to not you know honestly I can say I was naive to not even know what I was doing at that right, moment like right. I knew to make plays but oh, I you're, didn't know you're a legend was, forever you know what I'm saying DC like exactly so you know what I mean that means a lot to me now looking back at it but man them Eagles games always been tough and whether you're playing them there, playing here, mm-hmm. it seems like they have our number. You know what I mean? It seems like they've always been to me. You know, no matter how many times we have we we beaten them, it seems like they still have, have gotten uh, the upper hand on us. And I don't know about you, we're not playing no more, right. but I'm about ready for that to be done with. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm hoping we can start having a different feel about when we see those guys from down 95. I, oh, know, yeah. I know they ain't that far from us, you know oh, what yeah. I mean? So they're they going to bring And they, they swept us last year, I'm sure – Coach Rivera, he's emphasizing that and saying, "Hey, you know those guys got the best of us last year. Yeah. We need to pay them back." Uh, and this and it's the first division game. Going to Philadelphia, did you ever try to get the you know, the cheesecake or what, uh, what, yeah? What's is there a favorite cheesecake spot or not cheese steak spot here in in DC? 
I don't know. I don't even ask for them here. But I've drove from here to Philly just to have one really? every now and then. Yeah, when I was, especially when I was there, uh, had my little meal thing going on. Yeah. Man, on my cheat days, I would I would map it out. Like, look, man, okay, tomorrow my cheat day, I I can have anything I want. You drive the you I'm drove gonna, the film. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that workout in early in the morning. I'm gonna jump on the jump on the thing and go ahead. I I I did it. I did it once by myself. The next time I had Stu take me out there. But <laughs> you know, I used to go to Ishka Bibbles. Ishka Bibbles on South Street in Philly. A lot of people have get, Brought me cheesesteaks from Geno's and yeah. other spots there, especially when we used to play Temple. Miami played Temple every year. They was in the Big East. So when we used to go to Philly to play Temple, you know, I was always have guys that's from that area. Mom would bring right. all the, you right. know, bring the whole bus, a busload of cheesesteaks. And so I got a chance to experience other ones. And I remember Wayne Corbett when I was playing with the playing with the Jets. Wayne Corbett, I'm not sure if he had somebody brought, you know, bring us one. I think the first time he had somebody bring us one. And man, I've been into that thing. And the next time I went to Philly, I had to go find out for myself. You know what I mean? I wanted it hot. <laughs> it was like that. I wanted it hot. Because when I had ate the other one, it was cold. It was yeah, kind of room yeah. temperature. I wanted that thing piping hot. And so, Ishka Bills has been my spot ever since then. And like I say, man, I would jump in the car and go All ride right. and get me one, you know, and spend a little time so, out there. Hey, so, we play Philly later this year on a Monday night. We gonna have to go to that spot, Tanner. You, you gonna, Tanner, you gonna have to take me to that spot, man. Oh. But in the meantime, we gonna wrap here from from the Players Club. Look forward to you catching us next week.